Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. A few days late again, but better late than never. Today we are going to be tackling one of the remaining elements of our sculpture that we need in order for this to be a full figure, and that is the feet. The feet are perhaps not the most exciting thing in the world, but they are just as important as anything else on this figure. They won't get the most attention, but they will need to be there in order to complement the figure well, so that this can be a moderately successful statue. First we need a base for the feet to stand on. The base we had established was, or is, a bit too small, for no real reason other than that we needed a small base there, some clay there, to secure the armature of the legs to the wooden base so the legs don't move around too much. Now we need a little bit more space down there in order to place the feet. It's important if you want the figure to read well that the base is fairly flat. If you create a slope, you will start having potential issues, unforeseen issues, because your model or your reference is not standing on a slope. So make sure the base is pretty flat, more or less horizontal. I always begin with drawing because it makes life easier. So, with the base established, I can use my drawing tool and draw out the shape of the foot on the base. I can gauge the length of the foot this way without committing to anything that's going to take a lot of time to redo. Drawing in the clay takes a few seconds to fix or, or rectify. The most important thing I'd say to get right here is the length of the foot. Remember that the figure must function within itself or in relationship to itself. So the best way to decide on the length of the feet is to compare them to some other known length on the body. I like to compare the length of the foot or the feet to the lower arms from elbow to wrist you will normally be able to fit one foot within elbow to wrist. You can also compare it to other elements like the width of the box if you decide to sculpt the feet before sculpting arms. The important thing being that the feet fit with the figure somehow. Potentially comparing it to multiple sources just to make sure everything is functioning well is a good way to go I think. The shape of the foot is the secondary thing we are looking to establish, and while not as important as the length because, in the case of the foot, length functions the same way as the height does in the figure, and the width is the width of the foot observed from above. So the width of the foot is very forgiving, and just like in the body, heights, or in this case the length of the foot, is less forgiving. In order to simplify the outline of the foot, I like to imagine that I'm drawing the outline of the tape marks marking the model's feet on the model stand. If you don't know what I'm talking about, usually if we have a model that comes back for multiple sessions, we place tape marks around their feet so that we can be sure that the feet are placed in the same place every time the model comes in. So to make things a little easier for myself, I try to begin the outline of the feet in this fashion. This means drawing the outline with straight lines, no curves, and simplifying the amount of lines that I use. Because feet can be very complex. From a practitioner's standpoint, always look for a way to simplify the task. A theorist tends to look for ways to make the task seem more complex. We are practitioners in this scenario, so we'll look for any way possible to simplify this process as much as possible, to make it as easy as possible for ourselves.
Drawing helps us make complex decisions without committing to anything solid. We can judge the decision we made as a drawing and progress by adding clay once we're satisfied with the drawing. Almost everything in sculpture can be judged or should be judged in this fashion. Draw first, think, adjust the drawing, think, adjust the drawing again, think, commit. Try to get in the habit of this rhythm and your sculpture will be more thoroughly thought through. And as a result of being made while you were consciously making decisions, your sculpture will be better. The next step will be very familiar to those of you who have watched the other videos in this series. Now it's time to begin sculpting the contour of the foot from the side view. From the side view, we can observe certain things. Things like the height of the foot, the angle at which the foot slopes from very high at the calf towards the lower, towards the toes. And we can easily observe the length of the foot. Now what we can't observe that we need at this stage is the direction of the contour at where or where the contour sits in space. But this we can observe from the front. So we will move between the front and the side view. I don't have a model in front of me, but if you do, you can try and observe the foot from foot or ground level. In other words, close to the ground and, and from above as well. But I do suggest while sculpting the feet, once the dimensions are established, that you get down to the ground level and observe the feet properly this way. As with many parts of the body, the contour of the foot is surprisingly complex. And simplifying this step, simplifying building the contours that is, will get you into trouble as the volumes you'll eventually will try to turn won't turn as they should and as you need them to if the contours are misplaced. The high point of the foot runs down the length of the foot from the calf towards the toes, but it's situated more towards the inside of the foot rather than the outside. This means that once we begin attempting to deal with turning the volume of the foot the inside of the foot will have a more abrupt, steep turn of the form, from the high point down towards the ground. The outside of the foot will have the opposite going on, a slower turn, more of a slope actually. A slow turn towards the ground. So the placement of your contour in space matters a lot more than it actually might seem at this early stage. As long as you are below the overall height of the foot, which is what the contour will eventually represent, the highest point along the foot that is, the contour can be simplified and be placed wrong. But once you begin approaching the overall height of the foot, the contour needs to move towards where it needs to be in order for you to turn the volume of the foot correctly. The feet in this scale are small, so they are unforgiving, as there is little to no room to adjust the contour as you build it. It requires very little clay to get the overall height of the foot, we get there very fast, and so mistakes tend to happen. This is the same as the arms in this scale, or the fingers in life-size scale. There's no room for mistakes in placing the contour. If you misplace the contour, you will end up with a fat foot. A foot that has walked for hours and hours. A swollen foot. And that's not what we're after, at least not in this scenario.
However, I do think it is important for me to point out that understanding how to control your sculpture to get the result that you're after is a, is a very good position to be in. In case you are asked to, or if you want to, sculpt a swollen foot, it's good to understand why something will seem swollen. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did and want to learn sculpture from me or just support the channel, check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. And right now there is exclusive sculpting content on my Patreon. The first series we have embarked on is the Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture and I'm super excited to finally be creating exclusive content for Patreon and I hope you will be too and we'll take a look. The link to my Patreon is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.